this person asked, I'm pregnant. I'm in my first trimester. Congratulations. What do I do? And I have, don't come at me. I've obviously messaged her separately and I've like given her advice already, but definitely something good to talk about because anecdotally, and I also will have to like say like I am prenatal and postpartum qualified as a coach Mm -hmm. and I have been for seven years now. So, um, was coaching it far before it was even relevant to me. Yeah. Um, but I feel like coaching women, it's important. To have it. that back up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially because I used to coach in person yeah. only and I only I need, to, I need to take the exam. I've done the book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How good. You you did the one with the textbook, didn't you, yeah. as well? Yeah. yeah. So good. Um, so nice to have it not just be online. Yeah. Um, Smart for them too because you can't duplicate it. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so every time somebody comes to me... Mm-hmm. Um, this happened recently with one of my own clients as well. Um, they'll, you're always one of the first people that knows when you're yeah, a coach and really cool. it is possibly my favorite part of the job. Yeah. Um, being the first person because you're like diffusing fires as well. Cause they're like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> um, first thing I say to everybody, cause they're like, but I feel okay so far. I'm like, cool. So it's from week six. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to weeks 10 to 14 generally. Yeah. That you're probably going to start experiencing feeling a little bit less slay. And I don't <laughs> say that to people. <laughs> less slay. <laughs> I don't say that to people to like give them an expectation. Yeah. But that is when your placenta starts forming. So you're not only developing a fetus, but you're developing another organ. Mm. Um, and it's not until your placenta that can kind of take over to start feeding your baby that your body can chill out. That is the worst biological way to describe it, but it's the most simple, easy yeah. way that people can pick it up. Like Accurate enough. you are making an <clears throat> organ as well as a baby. Yeah. Your hormones are doing things. <laughs> um, Stuff be happening. <laughs> yeah. And so my thing is always like, you're going to be pretty okay yeah. until that mark. And obviously there until are outliers. Not. Yeah. There are obviously outliers. Some people don't feel anything. Um, some people only feel like I personally felt like a fatigue that I've never, that's the most common thing. Like everyone feels a fatigue that there is no sleeping off this tired. Like you are tired to your bones. Mm -hmm. It is horrifying. Like I tell everyone the story. So I would coach at 6am, 7am, finish at eight and have to start again at nine. And I would nap in my car. Yeah. Like four cylinder hatchback guys i would nap in the back seat of my car and i would drive my car away so if people rocked up early they wouldn't see me sleeping in the back of my yeah. car because they didn't know i was pregnant yet yeah um <laughs> why would you even like answer that <laughs> sorry i was asleep <laughs> but so yeah you're gonna feel pretty unwell and i think that there are definitely two ways to go about it um and this might vary throughout not even throughout the weeks, but just throughout a day in itself. Like you might feel okay in the morning and shit in the evening, but am I going to feel better or worse going for a walk? Mm. That's always the first thing that I like going to the gym actually does get like incredibly exhausting in that first trimester. Um, And you don't feel amazing. People are very cautious. And obviously that's where the question comes from. Yeah. But I always tell my clients, if you can't go to the gym, can you go outside yeah, and, move. and go for a walk because I think that will benefit you more than laying down in bed because you're mm. going to be tired whether you sleep or not. Yeah. So that's something that I always, always, always recommend. Not go on the treadmill because that made me nauseous as well. Yeah. So like being outside, fresh air, vitamin D, yeah. all of the things, that is always something I'll say. Now, don't feel guilty for not training in your first trimester. However, the one thing I will say, aside from the energy, it is your last opportunity for quite a long time to get most of your training in. So the first thing that I take out is maximal lifts. Yeah. So um, I have a client that was prepping to max out. And this is a very like recent one, um, prepping to max out. And now it's like, cool, we are pulling the pin on that yeah. completely. You're still going to be squat benching and deadlifting though. Yeah. 
we there is just absolutely no necessity for you to be at that top end strength. Mm-hmm. Is it dangerous? No, mm-hmm. not in that first thing. Yeah. Um, I won't be held responsible for that though because it's giving someone something that I can't explain. So yeah. I don't want to do it. So just <clears throat> as a coach, why should you be maxing out right now and it's not a goal? Right. Yeah. I know someone that competed. She found out she was pregnant and competed like on the morning of her comp. Yeah, and wow. still still competed. Yeah. Still did it. Like, it's fine. I had, a, I had one that didn't know. Yeah. And she pulled... I can't remember it was 160, 170. Yeah. Uh, and then like four days later was like, ah, uh, so I'm pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like... It's okay. Yeah. Like it is so okay, but I think if you're aware of it, your goals instantly change. Yeah. Done. Plus it's going to fuck with your head mm-hmm. if it's like from performance based. Yeah. Um it's your last opportunity for a little while to do things like sit-ups. Yep. And ab training, like you'll continue core training. Mm-hmm. But as a general rule, you find out you're pregnant, don't freak out, your training doesn't have to change. Yeah. And that's, that's like that's like been the that's rule the- forever, I like, if you've been doing it, keep doing it. Yes. Yeah. If you've been doing it, keep doing it. I think really make the most of those first couple of months of knowing like I instantly added sit-ups in. Yeah. Because I was like, I know Mm. that I'm not, I would never think twice about a sit-up, Yeah. but knowing that I can't do them when you're unable to like crunch, um, like that spinal flexion. Yeah. I was like, I know you're going to want to do them. Yeah. So I asked my clients like, do you want to train abs? Yeah. Because you're not going to. Mm -hmm. Um. So, from a training perspective, you piss on a stick. <laughs> Gorgeous way of saying it. <laughs> Nothing has to change. You're fine. Yeah. You can keep running if you're running. You can keep squat benching, deadlifting. You can do all of the things. Absolutely A-OK. Second trimester is when most things start to change. But the first thing I would always recommend people do, um, connective breathing. So, you're going to start learning that intra-abdominal pressure doesn't mean holding your breath. And this is a good thing to know for all clients, like you should be able to brace yeah. and keep talking yeah. and keep breathing. Um, so understanding that bracing is not holding your breath. Yeah. It's going to be very, very, very important through pregnancy because you hold your breath, less oxygen is going mm. to the baby. Um, so that's obviously something you don't want to do. It's fine in short doses, but you don't want to be in those habits, particularly in labor where you need a constant steady flow of breathing so that baby gets a steady flow of oxygen. Mm-hmm. Um So that one, so understanding breathing. So you want to start inhaling on the easy part of your lifts and exhaling on the hard part of your lifts. So inhaling on the eccentric, exhaling on the concentric, um, just to practice that rhythm and flow. And the other two things that are not necessarily like, if you're listening to this segment still, you're obviously either wanting to fall pregnant, want to know for your clients, or you are pregnant. Um, The other thing I get people to do as well before it becomes something that they have to consciously think about is one, start rolling to the side to sit up. Mm. So stop crunching to get out of bed, stop crunching to get off the bench at the gym, stop crunching to do all of those things and start practicing leaning to the side and using your obliques to get up. Mm. So it's nothing crazy, but lean to the side, use your obliques. That's going to help you because that's something that you're going to have to start doing very, very soon anyway. And then the next one, which is like lesser talked about until people get pelvic girdle pain, Mm. is whenever you are getting up or moving, stop leading one leg at a time. So think you're driving in the car for the ear people. Um, You go to get out of your car, you're in the driver's seat, you lead with your right leg and then your left leg follows. Start swiveling your bum and keeping Mm. your knees together and not opening one hip at a time in those directions. That is going to help with things like pelvic girdle pain and whatnot going forward. But keep single leg movements like lunges yeah. and split squats in as long as you physically can. Yeah. That's like all Amy did. <laughs> Everything was like, even her upper body work was like split stance, half kneeling. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think, um, cause like there are so many, I think for anything more detailed than that, like, feel free to reach out. Like it's not a gatekeeping thing. It's just <clears throat> yeah. advice is so general. Like uh, do single arm overhead presses because a barbell overhead press has a lot more downward pressure Yeah, and you're putting more pressure on your pelvic floor. So there are a lot of things like that yeah. 
that you can talk about and change. None of them are inherently bad. It's just explaining what would benefit you more at that stage. Um, but first trimester is just the easiest to navigate. Yeah. It's your head that's the hardest and dealing with a level of fatigue. If you are nauseous and you take prenatal vitamins, stop taking them first thing in the morning. Mm. Everyone's like, oh, habit stacking first thing. It actually will probably make you feel a little bit more unwell because yeah. the herby taste of it is a little bit gross. Um, eat dry carbs first thing in the morning. Even if you don't feel like eating, eat consistently throughout the day in small doses. Even if you vomit, especially if you vomit, don't feel guilty if you vomit. The baby is still going to continue to grow. You will have more than enough time yeah. to continue eating. I used to put an up and go and dry biscuits on Amy's bedside table every night. That's so Because <laughs> at like three o'clock in the morning, she'd be like, I'm going to eat the whole fucking world. Yeah. Yeah. It's so... It's such an intense feeling. So I never experienced... Um, so I threw up. I think you asked before the podcast. I was like, oh, you can wait. Um, I threw up twice yep. in my first trimester. Yeah. Amy would have been about similar. I think. Both times. So I found out I was pregnant in... Fell pregnant in December. Found out I was pregnant like first week of January. Um, and it was hot. Yeah. So when everything kicked in... And I started feeling nauseous. It was like mid to end January, February. Yeah. And I was on the pendulum squat. That'll do it. <laughs> and I'm not a... I don't, I don't throw up when I train. Yeah. It's just not... I'm not a vomiter. Um, it was hot. It was like 30 something degrees in the gym. I was bloated. So I was in a baggy t-shirt. Mm-hmm. I don't train in clothes if anyone knows me. And it was before I told my brother I was pregnant. And I was training with my brother. Yeah. And I was like, yeet. (laughs) (laughs) So I went and threw up in the toilets of Muscle City. And then another one was coming home from a training session on a hot day. Yeah. I sat on, because like my bathroom, the floor and the walls are tiled, like most bathrooms. I just like sat up against the tiles and then just like put my head in the toilet. Yeah. But I was like pretty lucky outside of that. I just had a lot of food aversions, like meat, pro tip for anyone, crumbed meat. Chicken schnitzel, you mm. can eat if you want to put down protein. You'll be able to eat it and trick yourself into thinking it's a carb. You might physically feel a little bit ill if like you're really like physically averse, but it's usually just the smell yeah. and a texture thing. Um, so Yeah, Amy went real heavy on chicken. The meaty meat. Yeah. Like if I cook steak or yeah. whatever. Like it was <clears throat> spaghetti bolognese was okay because it was enough sauce. Yeah. Um Yum. but her favorite is like cutlets like lamb cutlets and yeah. i made them for yeah she that was late and she was like i cannot even fucking look at that yeah crumbed and everything and she was like no nah, that's uh, too much meat <laughs> i went to oh so it's like asian fusion um so it was for my birthday so saint cloud in it's like got a long name but it's saint cloud it's like in hawthorne or something like that yeah um beautiful rooftop bar should go back um but I, so my birthday is January the 22nd and I told everyone I was like my family, I was pregnant at my birthday. So I was only like six weeks pregnant. Yep. Um, I just like, it was easy to have all the family in one room and tell everyone. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we chose to say it quite early to the fam, but the day before I was having a dinner with Nathan and Zoya. Mm-hmm. So my best friends. And I was like, I'm going to tell them before I tell my family. And we went out for Asian fusion and I was like, I need to tell them so early because I cannot look <laughs> at any anything. Of that. <laughs> and then they felt really bad. And I was like, I picked the place. Yeah. But like, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and once I was like heading out. So like, um, Bryce would meal prep every Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. And that was just like the norm. And I was heading out to go to work like coaching on a Saturday morning. Yeah. And I fucking lost it at him. I was like, it smells like me. This is <laughs> disgusting. Why would you do that to me? I'm going to vomit at work. And he's like, bro, I literally do this <laughs> every week. You should know better. <laughs> you should know exactly how I'm feeling at all times. Yeah. <laughs> They're like the notable ones. And I was like, fuck. Yeah. And then I just went through this random phase for like, Two days. I really wanted dim sims. And I don't eat <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't eaten one since. <laughs> Just tick the box and we're done. 
Yeah, I think <laughs> with my clients, I think what it's similar to what you've said. It's like, how do we minimize the anxiety and the stress and make what can blow up into a huge issue just not be one? Yeah. And the the simplest answer is like, if you've been doing it, you can keep doing it. That's and you'll pretty much be fine. And then I would also add to that is I've experienced, I would say maybe 50% of the women I've worked with that have fallen pregnant, 50% of them can't keep up with the routine that they had. Mm-hmm. So it was four times a week. They're like, maybe twice, sometimes once. Yeah. I reckon Amy had four weeks off totally. Um, went back to Pilates for maybe two months. And then actually we found a PT and we're like, this is, she just got too restricted yeah. for Pilates to work. Shush. <laughs> Shh, hush. Um, <laughs> just like one last, just wanted to get the last word in. Last say. Um, so I, well, the other thing I would say is like, you can reintroduce it. So don't get yes. down on yourself or whatever. It's like if you, so what Amy was experiencing is she'd be okay, but if she went, she was wiped for like a day and a half. Yeah. It's like, okay, so you feel horrible off the back of it. Yeah. We live in the mountains. Like, Just go for a walk. Yeah. Like you said. Um, and then just reintroduce it when you feel better. Yeah. Which was, I think it was like the 11th week. It was just like bang. Yeah. Just like just, back to normal. It's somewhere between 10 and 14 for most people that don't have hyperemesis. Yeah. Like it's so simple. Like I definitely gave up a few sessions here and there. Um, in the early days, like yeah. definitely a couple of days a week for some, whatever. Cause you're also trading your fair, like trading your spare time with like blood tests and a lot mm. of those things in the early days as well. Yeah. Um, but don't, if something doesn't feel right and something kind of hurts in a way that is different, completely fair to, if you don't have someone to bounce ideas off, um, or a trainer or someone qualified or a women's health physio, like that's okay. Like you can stop what you're doing, change it, see if something else feels good, whatever. But pregnancy is an ever changing landscape. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, I went through a couple of weeks where I got really bad back pain when I was walking and we're in the middle of lockdowns. Yeah. So I was limited to free weights only at home, which was kind of a bit more strain on your back and, you know, mm. not, uh, not machine work. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like I went weeks where walking wasn't hurt, yeah. but training felt good. Yeah. And then it flipped. Yeah. And like it just, just one day is not your whole pregnancy. One week is not your whole pregnancy. One month is not your whole pregnancy. Yeah. And just don't, don't throw being physically active in the bin. Yeah. Whether it is Pilates or training or walking as an average over the duration of your pregnancy, try to keep a form of physical activity in, but absolutely do not hold any guilt yeah. in not maintaining what it currently looks like now. And that means frequency and what the movement is. Yeah. 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 Last, last little bit on that is the people who find it the most challenging are the people that have identity tied into their training. Yeah. So if you do have that and I have one of my girls is 38 weeks. She's looking great. It looks unreal. Yeah. I'm still training unreal. Yeah. Um, and she she won't mind me saying because she's openly like, this is who I am. Yeah. <laughs> and she yep. already is like, I want to get back. She's posting her throwbacks. She's yeah. like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so she, in the period she couldn't get to the gym, felt not herself and it was a real challenge for her. Yeah. So th- that's the only thing is just like, you have to switch your mindset, I think, for that time period that your training goal is to be in optimal health. And if you can do that, then it kind of it quells a lot of that. I'm not enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not whatever. Yeah. It's like, are you creating the best possible environment you can for your health right now for you and your child? Yes. Then you can't do any more. Exactly. 